This is now the main frames, the skid part on the ground. And uh, what I did now, you can see, zoom in here, I found the center point of the 4x4 four four skids or whatever size you used. Even though these are 12 foot sold as 12 foot 4x4s, four four, they were actually 12 foot 1 inch and a quarter. So the center point was 6 and 5 eighths, 6 foot and 5 eighths of an inch. So I did that on both sides here. Then the next thing you're going to need are 2x4s that are 12 foot, and you're going to do the same thing. You're going to find the center point of them. See the line there? And that's going to help you get these centered, which these are only uh, 12 foot and 1 inch, so the center line of this is 6 foot and a half inch. Then I'm going to lay these down on top of these and line up the two lines and mark out then where my end piece here will go. You'll see that here in a minute. So I've got it lined up, then I'm coming up to here and marking where the outer edge of this cross 4x4 is at, and then the inner edge on both ends. Now what I have to do, I have to transfer those marks to the other one. Basically what I've got here is a bottom plate and a top plate for this front wall. I ended up deciding on six and a half foot for the front and six foot for the back. Now there's going to be rafters on top of these so they're actually going to be a little bit taller than that too. Um, but Basically what I did, I said six and a half foot, I converted that to inches, 78 inches. I'm subtracting the thickness of the bottom and the top plate, which is three inches. Two befores are an inch and a half thick, inch and a half, and inch and a half is three inches. To come up with, these needed to be 75 inches long. Okay, so now what you're going to do is after I get everything situated here. So I'm basically going to assemble this now just like I'm framing up a home wall. I want this line to be I want this two before to be at the very edge of my outer line.
I got this one as centered on the line. All right, I kind of wish I would have turned this on, but I had to put some one by twos on the side. Trying to stand this up, I keep forgetting I'm on a hillside by myself. So I need to get this wall stood up, relatively squared, screwed into place. Basically what I did was I put a one by two on each end to kind of serve as like to hold most of the weight. Then when I go here and push up, see how they're able to support it. What looks crooked might actually be square. I can tell that it's probably not though. Part of the reason why I did this, the way I did it, I want to put a couple of screws on either side of this 4x4 that's the end piece. Basically what I'm doing is if the screws for that ever come loose, or if the glue ever breaks, this top 4x4 will be holding it in place. There we go. I'll leave the braces in place. The next part is to build the back wall. Okay, folks. Basically, you're going to do the back wall the same way we did the front wall I've, with a, a slight change. You're going to find the center of the board so you can line it up with the other one. You're going to lay out your two in lines on each one. And then what you have to do is two foot from this line every two foot you put another line that's where basically your studs are going to go so uh just so happens to be that you know i'm not actually framing in a perfectly uh, even number so it ends up being that i need eight two by fours for this to uh, work out right. Now this last piece is going to be pretty short. Uh, so I'll have to trim it off. But that's just what you run into. I could have actually done this better. Um, but I also decided to go with a six foot front, six and a half foot front, and a six foot rear wall because this is going to be on a hillside and that's a foot drop and six feet so that's pretty decent pitch uh, and it's also going to be on a hillside too so not a big deal um, it didn't really have to be that tall for the necessarily for the goats it's just that tall to make it easier for me to clean i still have the temporary braces on this front wall there's still more work that needs to be done there'll be some braces that goes into that corner that center part and that corner down there that'll keep it from racking side to side and that sort of thing but we'll get there eventually uh, so but right now i'm building the rear wall and i'm going to start putting it together now so i went ahead and laid out all of the eight two by fours that i needed i've got them measured off so now i'm going to cut them to the right length that would be uh, 69 inches plus three gives you the six foot 
something that I could normally build in a, you know, a few hours has taken me much longer than I thought it would take, and I'll tell you why. I have a pulled muscle on my back, and I don't know if you've ever had a pulled muscle or not, but it has been fun to build this by myself with a pulled muscle. Okay, kind of similar. We're going to lay the boards out, line them up with our lines, get them screwed in on the bottom plate, and go and do the top plate. You ever have a day where nothing goes right? <laughs> well, my day's not really like been all bad, but I realized after I recorded that last segment, I didn't even have my microphone on. So, it was probably the best one. What did you miss? I think I said um, I come back from took a small break. I drank some electrolytes and water. I realized I hadn't drank any water all day and as soon as I did that I started feeling better so I went ahead and put the other wall up. And to catch you up even farther what I'm doing now is cutting the parts I need for the little short end wall. Of course there's two of them but just cutting the pieces for the first one now.
These are the wall studs for the short end, cutting them to length. I usually take and make them the length, the same length as the shortest wall. So the side walls are the same length as the back wall, which is the shortest wall. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And I believe this battery needs change. So, let me do that. I'll reposition the camera and we'll put up the first end wall. So what I'm doing now is basically the same thing. I've got the end wall studs laid out. I'm using the four by fours to kind of bring it up to about the same level as the rest. Hopefully this one's a little bit easier to stand up. All right, basically what I'm gonna do, I've got this corner as square. Make sure that it stays square. I'm putting these on the inside so that way I can leave these on until I get the siding on. Don't think it's going to get much better than that. So I'll go ahead around and do the other corners the exact same way. Go ahead and show this to you guys. I didn't want you to think I was cheating. I basically used a brace to hold it in place. No gaps anywhere. And uh, this board here held that corner square. And uh, hopefully everything is good now. I'll check it, but I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and uh, screw that in to hold it in place until I can get uh, the siding on it. All right, folks, sorry about yesterday. I don't know if I got um, heat exhaustion or dehydrated or what happened, but yesterday was not one of my better days uh, building.